is Sports Line. Television, Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on News Channel 5 Plus. Titans get a big win on Sunday. What a game at Nissan Stadium. Great start. Below, perhaps even a meltdown of sorts in the third quarter. Fantastic fourth quarter comeback. Finishes it off with the tying score with four seconds left. And then, of course, Derrick Henry plowing in for the winning touchdown in overtime. Your thoughts on the game. Welcome to the program tonight. 737-7767 is our number. Our phone lines will be out, open throughout the entire show for you. But the Titans are 5-0 for the first time since they started 10-0 back in 2008. It's their first five-game winning streak, period, since 2009. So you think about last year's great run towards the end of the season. You think about the playoff team of a few years ago. Those teams had four game winning streaks. But it has you have to go all the way back to 2009 to find the last time the Titans won five straight games. They've done it this year to start off the season. They're on top of the AFC South and they have a monster game coming up Sunday against the Steelers back at Eason Stadium at noon. This, of course, was a game that was scheduled for a few weekends ago that was postponed due to the Titans COVID-19 issues. And so now what was a bye week becomes a week seven showdown between two of the three remaining unbeatens in the National Football League. The Seahawks, of course, are the other team that is 5-0 and at this point. So great win for the Titans on Sunday. Huge game coming up this week, and we can dive into all of it tonight. But, a couple things. Number one, how about the Titans resolve to win another close game? In their 5-0 start, the Titans have now won four games in which they have either kicked a game-winning field goal inside the final two minutes of regulation or now this game that they won in overtime. So four of five games have been decided by a total of 12 points. But this team just believes. They believe they're going to figure out a way to get it done. And even in the third quarter when things went haywire, Steven Guskowski got a field goal blocked again. Missed another field goal in there. You had a strip sack of Ryan Tannehill that the Texans recovered at the four-yard line that set up a touchdown. 16 straight points from Houston, if you include the field goal they hit at the very end of the first half, to take them from down 21 to seven to up 23 to 21. It ultimately got to 36-29 in the fourth quarter. And that's when the Titans drove the field inside the final two minutes to tie the game up. Couple things here. Number one, how amazing was Ryan Tannehill once again? 364 yards passing, four touchdowns. He was as good, if not better, than Deshaun Watson, who many people think is one of the best quarterbacks in the league. And that should come as no surprise, because if you look back now, since week seven of last year, a full year, with Ryan Tannehill as the Titans starting quarterback, his numbers are as good as anybody in the leagues. Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Ryan Tannehill is right there. He's got 41 touchdown passes in a calendar year of a regular season. Six interceptions. I mean, that's MVP type stuff. And he was great again on Sunday. He did have the strip sack. He did have an interception. But he was awesome when it counted. And down the stretch, he drives the Titans 76 yards in the final 145, and he throws that touchdown to A.J. Brown. Clock is ticking down. Time is escaping from the Titans, and he hits A.J. Brown. He made a great catch in the corner of the end zone, but Tannehill put the ball where really only his guy could get it. It was a great throw, great catch, and it tied the game up. How amazing was Derrick Henry? 
The Titans' other MVP candidate rushes for 212 yards on 22 carries. He has 264 total yards in the game, including that huge 53-yard pass completion there in overtime to get that drive started. Of course, he has the game-winning touchdown. He has that electrifying 94-yard touchdown in the fourth quarter. He was sensational again. All hail the king. He just continues to pound out yards. He continues to be the workhorse for this team. I don't know if anybody is more valuable in the National Football League than Derrick Henry is right now to the way the Titans want to play. But Tannehill's pretty good too. And here's a key stat when you look at Derrick Henry and you look at his numbers. When Derrick Henry rushes for more than 100 yards in a game, the Titans are now 16-0 and during his career. 16 and 0. If he tops the century mark, the Titans are playing the way they want to play, and if they do that, they're difficult to beat. That has always been the case, and it is definitely the case right now with this team. And you add Ryan Tannehill, and you add the weapons on offense to that, and all of a sudden you got a really scary looking offense. 42 points for the second time in five days as they wrap up that crazy week with a Tuesday night win over a team that was previously unbeaten in the Bills, and then a Sunday overtime win over a division rival in the Texans. And now this three-game homestand wraps up this week, but the offense continues to do amazing things. A franchise record 601 yards on Sunday. And think about the other weapons. All the attention goes to Tannehill and Henry. That's where I started, and rightfully so, because those guys are both MVP candidates right now based off of the way they're playing. But it's not just them. A.J. Brown comes back from the knee bruise, gets back into the lineup on Tuesday night, catches a touchdown right out of the gate against the Bills. He was the leading receiver that night. Seven catches, 82 yards. Comes back on Sunday, has another solid game, and he gets two touchdowns in that game, including that tying touchdown with four seconds to go. And Brown said after the game, look, I told Ryan Tannehill, just throw it to him. Just put it up. I'll go make the play. That is the level of confidence that he has, and it's the level of the confidence that the Titans have in him. He has become a number one wide receiver in the National Football League. But he's also not alone at that position. He's, he's had to step up last week because on Tuesday night, Titans didn't have Adam Humphreys or Corey Davis because they were on the COVID-19 reserve list. And A.J. Brown went out there and said, it doesn't matter. I'm a number one. Give me the ball. And they did, and they were effective. On Sunday, you get Adam Humphreys back. He was a great third down guy. He had a huge touchdown catch as well in the first half. Still waiting for Corey Davis, who cleared the COVID list yesterday and will be available this week. And now all of a sudden, you've got lots of options at that receiver position. We've seen Khalif Raymond have a 100-yard game already this season. We saw Nick Westbrook Akine catch a two-point conversion on Sunday against the Texans. We've seen other guys step up when they need to. And how about Anthony Ferkser? Speaking of stepping up, John U. Smith gets nicked up in that game. He has to go out for a little while, and the Titans turn to the second tight end. And Ferkser just goes out. All he does catch eight balls, many of them huge on third down type situations for a career high 113 yards, and he also had a touchdown in the first half. It was a monster game from the guy they called Ferk, and it just shows the level of confidence that Arthur Smith, the offensive coordinator, and Ryan Tannehill have in all of these different guys. That it doesn't have to be, we're gonna go there, it's go do your job, go get open, and if you do, we're going to get you the football. And the Titans have done that consistently throughout the start of this season and going back to last year under Ryan Tannehill, and that's why they're averaging more than 30 points per game and look like one of the best offenses in football. Ranked number two right now in overall offense, scoring in bunches. This is a very, very good offensive football team. You worry about the defense. You worry about how many points the defense has given up. You worry about third down inefficiency. 20 of the last 31 third downs by the opponents have been converted. It's 
basically 65% or more. That can't happen. That cannot happen for a good defense. And that's why teams are scoring. The Titans simply cannot get off the field. The one thing that has been their saving grace throughout the start of this season has been the fact that they got turnovers. They were plus eight, number one in the league in turnover margin going into Sunday's game. They were minus two on Sunday. And that's why the game was where it was. Throw an interception. You get a strip sack that leads directly to seven points. You also get a field goal blocked. Those points left on the field or gifted away is why the game was what it was on Sunday. For the most part, the Titans have won that turnover battle. That has been a huge strength. They're still plus six. But if you're not getting turnovers, then you won't get them every week. If you cannot get off the field, you're going to be in a shootout. The Titans are equipped to be in those games. They won't shy away from anybody. But you don't want to have to live winning every game 35-31 or 42-36 like Sunday because you're not going to win every game like that. You're not going to make every play. You're not going to drag every toe in the corner of the end zone. At some point, the defense has to make some plays. They have to get some stops. The turnovers are nice, but they've got to get better. They have to be more consistent, as Mike Vrabel has said repeatedly over the last couple of days. And that job may be more important now because, of course, the big news yesterday is the fact that the worst fears from Sunday were confirmed and left tackle, three-time Pro Bowler Taylor Lewan suffered a torn ACL in the game. So that means you have maybe the most decorated player on the team in Taylor Lewan out for the rest of the season. I don't think he's the most valuable right now because of all the reasons we talked about with Tannehill and Henry, but he's a three-time Pro Bowler. He protects the blind side, and as the hat says, the Titans love to run left. And they had a pretty awesome thing going over there with Lawan, Roger Saffold, and then Ben Jones, the center. Now all of a sudden that changes. First thought is Ty Sembrello, who stepped in on Sunday is the new left tackle but we'll see they will consider dennis kelly move him over there they will consider isaiah wilson the rookie who has to really work his way back up to speed after everything that has happened in his preseason and the fact that he hasn't been on the practice field much at all he's got to figure out a way to just become a factor and that's going to be important now because for a while i think you sort of thought this guy may not play this year given everything that's going on i don't know if the titans have that luxury now given what happened to Lawan. But here's the biggest thing you look at when you look at where the Titans are with that offensive line. Dennis Kelly's a really good football player. He's been a great addition to this offensive line over the last several years. But Dennis Kelly is kind of a sixth offensive lineman. He's the guy that is the versatile piece that you plug in wherever you need to. That is why they went out and drafted Isaiah Wilson 29th overall. Because he's not one of the best offensive linemen on the team. Kelly works well, though, as a starter if he's the fifth best offensive lineman. And you have four really good linemen that you can lean with. And the Titans did. They had a pro bowler in Lawan. They had a guy who's been in a pro bowl with Saffold. A veteran that everybody loves and counts on and Ben Jones up the middle. And then Nate Davis, who's playing really well in year two, at right guard. The Titans liked what they had in those four spots. And so you feel good then about Kelly. Okay, maybe he's a borderline starter. But you add him to the other four and you've got a really good offensive line. Well, here's the problem. The most accomplished and best offensive lineman you have, Taylor Lewan, is now out for the rest of the season. So now everybody slides up in that pecking order. And whatever happens over at left tackle, whether Kelly slides over, whether Sambrello stays there, whether Isaiah Wilson somehow moves in, whatever happens in that regard, now all of a sudden, Dennis Kelly is your fourth best offensive lineman. And you either have a rookie or you have Sembrella moving in. It just changes the dynamic. It's not a doomsday scenario. 
but it is certainly less than ideal for the Titans, and they're going to have a huge challenge on their hands right away against the Steelers' defense that has been magnificent so far this year. They've gotten after quarterbacks, and they are great, great against the run as well. So, huge challenge for the pieces that will be new on Sunday, and a huge challenge for an offensive line that is going to have a different look without Big Papa or Daddy or whatever they call him, 77. Taylor Lewan on the left side. Our phone lines are open, 737-7767, the number tonight. We want to hear from you, your thoughts on the win, your thoughts on that crazy week. We did have a show Wednesday night after the Titans win over the Bills, but very rarely are you talking about two wins in the span of the week, and that's what we are doing right now with the Titans after last week, the win over the Bills, and then the win on Sunday against the Texans to get to 5-0. and Again, phone lines open, 737-7767, the number. We say hello first tonight to Hiram. Hiram, good evening. Welcome to Titans Talk. Hi, this is my first time calling you. I wanted to say I hope the Titans do begin Steelers. I want to know you're between Pittsburgh and Tennessee, the winners of the AFC, and go to Super Bowl Tampa, and who's doing the game for CBS this week. Hey, Iram, you still there? We seem to be losing your cell phone connection or whatever you got. You still there? Doesn't sound like it. Fortunately, lost a little bit of his connection there. I have not seen the official announcing pairings this week, but this looks like a monster game. It is the best game of the weekend. I would not be surprised at all if you get the A team of Jim Nance and Tony Romo for two 5 and 0 teams on Sunday. That officially either comes out tonight or early tomorrow, so we will see definitely on that. I'll try and check it during the next break. But you're going to have one of the really good pairings for sure for that game if by chance they put Nance and Romo onto the late afternoon game that CBS will have this weekend. But I think there's a good chance you get the A team for this game because it's two 5 0 teams. It is the game of the weekend in the National Football League. In terms of, I think the question was, what do I think about this weekend and what do I think of the chances of the Titans and the Steelers in terms of them representing the AFC? The way I look at it right now, my power rankings just stick with the three teams who are still unbeaten at this point. And the way I view it at this moment is I view it Steelers number one because I think they've been the best and most complete team to this point of the season in the NFL. I think their offense has been really good with Big Ben back. And I think their defense, as mentioned, has been phenomenal. I go Seahawks too because Russell Wilson is certainly in the MVP equation. That offense has been terrific in the red zone and overall this year. And then I go Titans number three. I love the way the team is playing. I love the fact that they're figuring out how to win games, but I also don't think they've completely hit their stride, especially as a full unit. The offense is humming. No complaints about what's going on there, but the defense has not been very good yet. The special teams has had some hiccups to this point, and they have had to eke out some games against teams that maybe aren't the best in football. The Jaguars. The Broncos, even Sunday against the Texans. Good wins, you got to win them, and they have. But the only game they've played against a really good team is the Bills. And they were incredible. It's the best game they've played all year coming off of those remarkable circumstances with everything they had with the shutdown at the facility and not practicing and all that. But That's the best game they've played, and there have been some hiccups elsewhere. So the way I look at it right now is a power rankings for the moment is Steelers, Seahawks, Titans. And we'll see how that shakes out with two of those teams playing each other this weekend. As I look forward for the entire season, if I'm handicapping right now based off of what I've seen and who has a chance to get to the Super Bowl, I think the AFC has several teams who can get there. I think the Titans and Steelers are certainly in the mix. Do not count out Kansas City, which looked impressive in terrible conditions yesterday in Buffalo. They had to turn to the running game a lot, and they did it effectively for Andy Reid. Kansas City, to me, is still the team to beat in this conference because Patrick Mahomes is a former MVP. He was the Super Bowl MVP last year, and he can do some miraculous things with the football. But the Steelers are right there. 
I think the Titans are right there. And let's not forget about the Ravens. 14-2 and two a year ago, 5-1 and one right now. Lamar Jackson continues to put up big numbers. That is a good offense. Defense looks pretty stout as well. To me, those are the four teams that I look at when I think contenders in the AFC. There's some other interesting teams there. I think Buffalo has the potential. I think Vegas has had some moments this year where they look really good, though they've also had some moments where they have struggled. But to me, when I think these are the teams that have the best chance to get out of the AFC, it starts with Kansas City. And then I think Pittsburgh, Baltimore, Tennessee, all kind of right there. I don't know if it's necessarily a next tier, but I think that you would put them as the contenders against the champion for right now in the AFC. Over in the NFC, a little different picture to me. I think the Seahawks look like the team to beat right now. New Orleans has not been nearly as good as I thought to this point. Tampa Bay looks solid. Not sure they're great. The Bears, to me, are 5-1 and one somehow, but I don't feel great about them. The Packers have just one loss, but they looked awful in Tampa Bay on Sunday. So who knows? Those teams are fine, but to me, I think Seattle's the team to beat right now in that conference. Good division. But I think Seattle's the team to beat right now in that conference unless either New Orleans finds its way or Tampa Bay really hits a groove. And they started to look better and better yesterday. That was an impressive performance, I'm sorry, on Sunday against Green Bay. Brady started to really find a connection with Rob Gronkowski, which will be a huge part of that offense if they can get it going. But we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Seems much more wide open, or at least there's more contenders of great teams in the AFC than I see right now in the NFC. Back to the phones we go. Let's say hello to Andrew. Andrew, how are you? Welcome to Titans Talk. Hello. What's going on, buddy? Not much. I'm just watching the show. Awesome. You got a question? Yes, sir. Go ahead with it. Um... What side do you think Kanye will line up on? The strong side or the weak side? And what are the Titans' chances of winning? So one of the things the Titans love about Jadavian Clowney is his versatility, Andrew. I think they're going to probably line him up multiple places. I think for the most part you're going to see him on the weak side. But I think you'll see him move around the field a lot and try and work matchups for what they're doing. The one thing the Titans don't have a ton of right now is outside linebacker depth. It has been a lot of Harold Landry. It has been a lot of Clowney. Vic Beasley had just 11 reps on Sunday. They traded Kamale Correa. Derek Roberson finally got back in the lineup this weekend but only played a handful of snaps. So you're going to see a lot of Landry. You're going to see a lot of Clowney. I think they're going to move those guys around some. But probably predominantly you'll see Clowney on the weak side for most part during the course of the day and the chances to win I think it's a great game I think the Steelers are rightfully installed at the moment as a point point and a half favorite I think they've been the slightly better team throughout the course of the year I think the loss of Taylor Lewan is a big big loss for the Titans right now going into week one that they have to figure that out trying to run the football against one of the best defenses in the league and the home field which normally counts for a lot you're only going to have 10 or 12,000 people there again on Sunday because of the capacity limitations so the home field advantage isn't quite what it would be in a normal year so I think it's a very much a toss-up game I certainly don't count the Titans out but I would lean Steelers right now just based off of what we've seen so far Okay, thank you for answering my question. You bet. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate the call tonight. We will take a break. We will come back. More of your phone calls on the way. Phone number is 737-7767. The bank is completely wide open. If you'd like to get in on the show, we'll get to some highlights. We'll get to some keys. Much more coming up here on Titans Talk on News Channel 5+. Plus.